it's actually great to see so many people uh, logged into this. This is this is fantastic, and I also think it's sort of indicative of how much interest is in the space. I'm certainly seeing a lot of it here in, in DC. So. Thank you very much, Colton. Uh, can everyone uh, see this uh, screen? It's good. Great. It's a pleasure to speak to you all today. Thank you, Dave, Colton, and the whole Zim2 team for organizing this uh, great presentation. Uh, Stefan and Chris Berry, you brought up some, you had some great uh, information there, and you brought up some great points. Um, and uh, I am certainly happy to present a short presentation on the Ashram Rare Earth Element and Fluorospar deposit, on which we've been working for 12 years now. Uh, I'm glad that last question was about mineralogy uh, to Dr. Neil, uh, because I wanted to say that all roads lead to monazite. Monazite is the industry preferred mineral to extract rare earth elements from due to its high neodymium and praseodymium, let's call it NDPR from now on, content compared to basnesite and xenotime hosted deposits. This is very important. Ultimately, uh, when Scott Moe and his government announced spending 31 to $35 million on the construction of the first rare earth element processor in Canada at the Saskatchewan Research Council in Saskatoon, um, I thought that was an interesting idea. I thought it was more interesting when the Export Minister of Trade and Development contacted me and introduced me to the Deputy Minister who then introduced me to the people at SRC. Ultimately, I was informed that SRC are setting up that processing facility to process monazite hosted material. Um, in addition, just over a year ago, uh, you may have been aware that uh, Mark Chalmers and the uh, management of Energy Fuels had a webinar where they announced that they were raising the rare earth element flag. Our very skilled and uh, valued uh, project manager, Darren Smith, called me up and he said, you should call those guys at Energy Fuels. So within 48 hours, I was on the phone with Mark Chalmers and two things became very clear from that first phone call. One, Mark had been given good uh, advice to retrofit their white mesa mill in Utah to become a rare earth element processor. And as Mark said to me, well, you know, we got some good information from a couple of guys down here in the United States. You might know their names, Andrew Wheeler, Wilbur Ross, and Dick Cheney. And I was like, yep, I know those guys. Absolutely. It's good advice. Secondly, what became clear was that on April 17th, 2020, when we had this phone call, uh, Mark didn't really have a line on feed. And so uh, he asked or I offered, I can't remember which, but they requested a sample from us. So they are certainly one of the companies we're happy to uh, supply feedstock to. More recently, in November of 2020, they successfully retrofitted their facility to process monazite hosted feed, which they are currently getting from Chemours uh, out of Georgia and Florida. And these are monazite uh, dominant uh, sands or monazite waste uh, from Chemours production of fluorospar, uh, uh, fertilizer, sorry. In terms of the current deal between Chemours and uh, energy fuels, Chemours is supplying them with 2,500 tons of monazite dominant feedstock per annum. Uh, the current business plan uh, for Commerce Resources is to produce somewhere around 35,000 tons of similar material to what Chemours is supplying energy fuels. So this is a, a you know, this is an interesting opportunity for Commerce Resources and uh, we'll continue to keep you updated on this. And yes, the ashram is uh, uh, a high grade monazite dominated deposit. In terms of uh, mineralogy and geological fundamentals, I'll just be very quick here. Commerce Resources was created around a set of carbonatites here in British Columbia, uh, the Blue River Project, where we have over 30 mineralized carbonatites. And uh, in terms of rare earth elements, uh, we started looking for a world-class rare earth element project in 2005 when China imposed a, uh, the global export duty on rare earth elements. And what we quickly learned, Dave Hodge and myself, uh, with our uh, amount of due diligence, was that the industry of rare earth elements was completely dominated by uh, commercial extraction from four minerals with monazite being the dominant one of those four. As well, over 80% of all rare earth elements are from carbonatite hosted sources. As Dr. Neil said, carbonatites can have different uh, uh, minerals. Uh, Defense Metals is a basnesite dominant project. Mountain Pass in California is a basnesite dominant project. Um, but uh, monazite is arguably the preferred mineral because it has a greater percentage of the magnet feed. Uh, the ashram is a carbonatite and it is dominated by monazite. 
This is just a list of global producers, and you can see Carbonatite, 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 Carbonatite. The world's largest project is Bionovo, and the next slide goes into a direct comparison between Commerce Resources' Ashram Project and Bionovo. Bionovo is the world's largest rare earth element producer. They would produce about 45% of the entire world supply. They always have and probably will for a long time because these Carbonatites are extremely large deposits going down to not the center of the earth, which is crazy, but uh, certainly down a very significant difference. Um, in terms of Mike's presentation on niobium, uh, it should also be noted that approximately 98 to 99% of all of the world's niobium also comes from carbonatite hosted sources. Uh, but back to rare earth elements. So Bionobo, the world's largest uh, rare earth element producer, uh, the ashram, a very large deposit, and also the world's second largest defined fluorospar resource, uh, with Bionobo being the world's largest. Uh, skipping down, uh, Bionobo is a carbonatite, as is the ashram. We are both monazite dominant with a basnazite secondary uh, mineralogy. But then down at the bottom, you can see that we actually have a slight higher distribution of that all-important NDPR. Now, this brings me to another uh, factor, which is all roads lead to, okay, who put that in the presentation? The heads will roll. All roads lead to the ashram, rare earth element fluorospar deposit, which is the largest monazite dominant defined resource in North America. Uh, full disclosure, a larger deposit, uh, a carbonatite uh, with uh, monazite dominant material does exist in Angola, uh, run by Pensana. It is about 313 million tons at a slightly lower grade, 1.43% rare earth elements. We are 249 million tons collectively measured, indicated, inferred at approximately 1.9%. So we're slightly higher grade and slightly smaller. But the main fact, unless you love Angola, I would rather be in Quebec. Uh, this is a picture of the original outcrop discovered by Ashley and Ramses following the direction of this bearded gentleman here, Mr. Darren Smith. And uh, this is a picture that was taken in 2015 at the Ashram uh, original outcrop. And you can see this gentleman here sporting a very nice toque or knit cap. That is Mr. Chris Berry. He has been to site. Uh, I will just mention this is Denny Williams here, who is the fund manager from Investissement Quebec, who then put a million dollars into commerce in February of 2017. And uh, uh, much to the, uh, um, uh, let me say that uh, Dave Hodge wasn't happy when uh, the government of Quebec was a commerce's largest shareholder for a couple of years. I'm happy to report that Zim2 is back again as commerce resources largest shareholder. And we are very, very fortunate to have the backing of Zim2. Uh, at any rate, uh, that is yours truly here at the outcrop. And uh, this was discovered on the last day of the field season in 2009. We drilled it in 2010 and the first discovery hole was amazing. I'm not quite sure why Chris Berry is so mad at me here. We're standing in front of the ashram bulk sample pit. I think I asked him to, to dig up a couple of tons of ashram material and carry it back in his roomy backpack. I don't know. He, he was, I, I don't know if he's ever forgiven me. Anyways, there yeah, we go. That picture, that's my bad side, Chris. You know, I take pictures better from the other side. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, to be very compliant with the regulators, the ashram resource is 1.6 million tons in the measured category, 27.7 million tons in the indicated category, and 219.8 million tons in the inferred category. This is based on only about 15,000 meters of drilling. We've added approximately another 10,000 meters of drilling to this, and we look forward to releasing that new resource in the pre-feasibility study. Uh, this is just a, a showing you how great our NDPR and magnet feed percentage is, a percentage better than Linus, uh, uh, a couple of percentage points better than Bionobo, and about 9% better than Mountain Pass down here. I'm going to wrap this up because uh, Dave said I should be giving a short presentation, but uh, we have optimized so much uh, for the project since the release of what were excellent economics in 2012. Uh, we have added close to 10,000 meters of drilling. We added the fluorospar byproduct, which was not included in those spectacular economics. Yes, Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Ultimately, in terms of the values of the rare earth elements we used to calculate those great economics in 2012, these are the four most important. Praseodymium at 59 a kilo, uh, neodymium at 60 a kilo, uh, uh, terbium at 764, and dysprosium at 624. You can see the prices now, 
all have appreciated significantly, excepting for that laggard dysprosium. But dysprosium is, and I think Chris brought this up in terms of uh, magnet tech, magnet R&D, dysprosium is just less important on a percentage basis to magnet manufacturer than it was in 2010. But these other three are more important because the percentage difference was picked up by these three that was lost by dysprosium. Uh, two of the things that we're very, very proud of is that Commerce has produced two commercially marketable samples, one of our rare element concentrate and also one of our upgraded acid grade fluorospar sample. Um, one of the final things I'd like to touch on is what everybody keeps on asking me about, which is the road. First off, Commerce could be in production with just an ice road. And we were asked in 2018 to send around a, a questionnaire which had two simple questions uh, from the government of Quebec. If the government of Quebec financed a road in this area, would you use the road, yes or no? And if you used it, would you uh, pay for a percentage of the maintenance fee? Eight companies, including Commerce, signed this yes. And then just a month ago, Midland Exploration and Soquem announced spending $5 million in the same area where this road is uh, supposed to go. And uh, Midland's Nachi Kapow project here is about 40 kilometers southwest from the ashram, which would be around here. And so I am hopeful that the government of Quebec uh, sees their way to finally financing this road. So at the end of the day, uh, the ashram is the most standard type of deposit that is in commercial production. We have a huge resource. We're in a great jurisdiction. We have produced high-grade mineral concentrates. We have produced commercially marketable samples of both of our commodities. Uh, we had positive economics in 2012, and we're working on the pre-fees, where we will finally include the uh, uh, by fluorospar byproduct. Excuse me. Thank you very much for the opportunity today. I hope I didn't go on too, too long. <laughs>